In the moments following the unveiling and the lights being brought up on the dazzling new achievement for Jacksonville University's glass program, Professor Brian Frews moves among the crowd sharing his thoughts as the person who imagined the project from the start. This was uh, a year of work for the rest of the six months of time and um, six months from inception to tonight. And so uh, it's been a lot of work, a lot of energy and other projects already in the field. JU was an early adopter of glass into the arts curriculum. So the Glass Art Society, which is this international body that has conferences and such, was founded in 71. In 1972, JU added glass art to its curriculum. JU's first three credit class in glass blowing was offered, and it would take several years to truly begin to thrive. Dr. Francis Bartlett Kinney, then Dean of College of Fine Arts, recalls the difficulties of getting the program started. JU was among only 30 other universities in the US to house glass programs and studios. Dr. William Persick was founding professor of the program and from 1992 to 2007, professor of art, Dr. Caroline Madden, served as head of studio concentrations in glass, ceramics and sculpture. Artist in residence, Jonathan Christie, worked alongside Professor Madden, bringing the Dale Chihuly influence into JU's burgeoning program. The largest work of his career, Lyrical Light, was another complex public art project completed in the JU studios in 2006. By July 1991, the program had grown significantly. In a letter from Dr. Kinney, Chancellor of the University at the time, to Susan King, then president of Steuben Glass in New York. You may be interested to know that the university's glass blowing program, initiated in 1972, is one of a highly select group in the nation. To mark our 20th anniversary of this program and to publicize our Steuben collection, we would like to plan for a special celebration. Backed by glass business giants like Steuben, the program embarked on many legendary collaborations, including host and master craftsmen Fritz Dreisbach, Jay Musler, and Robin Cass. Today, Dr. Kinney says that the program has truly proven itself, which usually happens with all good art. This sculpture is titled Creative Current, and for me, it's all about a blend of creativity with the visual arts and the performing arts. It's in a concert hall. I wanted to incorporate a sense of that in the sculpture. And so it's almost like from the front of the hall, as I see it, the music or sound is coming across and actually influencing the glass pieces as it undulates and shifts and then breaks into tangents and other rivers and ideas and that flow of exploration. So basically the project is gonna go from this beam right here all the way toward just a few feet from the windows is where the end of it is. What they've done for me is they've inserted hanging poles along every beam based on a map that I plotted out for them. It's actually on the floor here. I've got circles that they measured off the wall and then he put a laser on there and shot it up at the ceiling so he'd have the right point. And now they've got my posts installed. So this is the first time I'm actually seeing it. If it seems a complicated process, it is. Every detail from the location of the rafters, pipes, ductwork, walls and windows has to be taken into account and carefully measured. Overall, there's 100 feet and 16 points and we're talking about like at least 2,500 pounds hanging overhead when it's done. The daunting task of creating thousands of individual glass stems or tentacles is compounded by the responsibility of optimizing the production space materials, and the roughly 1,000 volunteer hours it will take to complete the work. So from the very beginning, I am a teacher. I want to involve community, people, and this was a big enough project that I knew I would not only need some extra hands, but also I wanted to use it as a springboard to get them involved in something bigger than just one person making something. To have that involvement and to have that celebration of people coming together to make something bigger than themselves, I invited that in and I felt very rewarded for having a team of people, over 50 people, who ended up having a hand in the creation of this sculpture. 
The most challenging part of this project is not any one part in particular, it's the combined just massive volume of the 2,500 glass pieces and with that 2,500 aluminum tubes and the welding of the spine and the shaping of the spine. So everything together just becomes this massive complex project full of many simple parts. Originally from Nashville, Tennessee, Andrew tried a glass blowing class on a wimp, encouraged by friends back home who thought it was cool that JU offered it. Soon he found himself making approximately 50 glass components per day over a two month period in order to support the project. Two other student volunteers, Brian says, actually perform in the concert hall where the final creation will be displayed. Built in the early 90s and designed by KBJ Architects, the concert venue was made possible by the generosity of Mary Virginia and Herman Terry. The Terry Concert Hall is a space that always was begging for something large to go in its lobby. So I was thrilled that Mary Virginia Terry, who of course the concert hall is named for, uh, was ready to do a renovation with the university, update some of the needs of the concert hall. The sound in that space is better than ever before, but included in her vision was a portion of that budget for having a sculpture in the lobby, something that was always conceived of but never really became a reality. And I had a wonderful time going through that design work to create something that was gonna really fit with the space and honor her legacy here on campus. And I had her in the studio with me to make what I call the alpha piece, the very start of the creative current, begins with a sculpted glass component that Mrs. Terry was in the glass shop with me at the middle of the afternoon, pulling, sweating, and grinning the whole time. The colors of Creative Current obviously transition across the whole piece. I really like that movement and that change. It makes it a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more interesting than if it was just one tone. And so I begin with a beautiful JU green, and then the current transitions across mostly blues for the length of the piece into branching out at the tips into some brighter, warmer reds, pinks, and purples. It's got about 24 different color blocks that move across the length of the sculpture. While this is the largest community glass project on which the program has ever embarked, it is only one of many spectacular, large-scale pieces completed by Jacksonville University. One of the driving factors in this project's timeline is the start of the 2017 fall semester. The university's 1800 square foot glass studio must be reset for classes to begin August 28th. As I roll back and forth, I can see the flame bouncing across the heads of the cane. You guys come over here and look, you can see it too. On my next heat, I'll have you come over and look here in the hole. First, she's warming up, and then as you warm up, you're gonna look at the tips of the canes on the right side, because the flame is coming from the right side. As you work back and forth, you see little yellow bits of fire coming up over the edges of the canes? That's what we're looking for. That indicates where the fire is and that those canes are getting hit. One incredible resource the program utilizes as they work together towards such an expansive goal is the help and expertise of JU alumni, Phil O'Reilly. To get your degree, you had to take two arts courses, and I first tried painting and liked it, but then once I got into glass, absolutely loved it. Like many successful JU alumni who now own or operate glass galleries and studios across the US, Phil and the team at Olympic Color Rods comprise one of the largest suppliers of glass blown color and tools in North America. Phil's story is a demonstration of the incredible reach and influence of JU's glass blowing program. So essentially it'd be like a rolling team. Uh, if you watch America's Cup or you would watch it, you, you, they essentially know what each of them has to do at what point. And just by watching the rhythm of what they're doing, or a crew team, they're all responsible, but you don't have to say anything. They just know from everything that's going on what, what happens next. Phil's exciting journey in the glass art industry has allowed him many opportunities for mentorship. One piece of advice he often repeats to students is about passion and teamwork. 
find your passion. If this is your passion, you'll you'll basically know right away, and be a be a team player and help other people as you would want to be helped, and think ahead as to what next. What what is next that needs to be done to make this piece, and that's what we try and do around here, at Olympic. So. Creative Current also required the expertise of individual contractors like Mel Beatty, who supplemented volunteer hours by buffing the steel spine and prepping each metal collar used to attach the glass stems. Fully supplied by Olympic Colour Rods and having crafted thousands of pieces of coloured glass in the studio, the next challenge for JU students is moving the sculpture's spine and more than 2,500 individual stems approximately half a mile to the prepared storage area within Terry Concert Hall. What has been termed the Great Glass Migration occurred on a rainy Thursday afternoon using a handful of vehicles and less than a dozen volunteers. We can just start doing it by hand. When you load them, load them in the same orientation they are. Those ones that are curly are upside down from the others. Keep them that way in your car and when we load them onto the shelf. Yep, every, everybody is helping. I'm no exception. But I do want to be as careful as we can, within reason. Obviously, if one goes, so be it. The entire process was complete in under two hours, and the timing could not be better with classes starting the following Monday. A feeling of anticipation was palpable among the volunteers, knowing that the final step of installation was no simple task. My name's Elise Leisure. I'm a community volunteer. Uh, I've also taken the, the glass demo series here, so that's kind of how I've gotten involved. It's just a ton of fun to be here. He gives you a lot of confidence that there's, there's nothing you can't do and uh, really is a great opportunity. And they don't come around that often, and I'm really lucky to be able to, to be involved with it. Sheets of industrial cardboard cover the newly carpeted floors of the Terry Concert Hall lobby and a temporary prepping area is arranged. Often working with a single lift, Brian would soon discover whether all of his pre-planning, design work and minute calculations will pay off. Jim Benedict, Associate Professor of Art, Brian's right hand on the project, oversees the details of all metalwork involved and provides additional expertise every step of the way. Both Brian and Jim recruited students who provided many willing hands, whether cataloguing coloured glass before the migration or hauling a 750 pound steel spine halfway across campus. I'm Connor Lauderdale, I'm a computer science major here at JU. I've talked with Brian on some of the design pieces, including structurally setting up the skeleton. It's massive. That comes with the complications of actually working within set constraints for weights and scale of each individual piece. Bingo. Once the spine is secure, the epoxy process begins in earnest. Below the massive skeleton, three to four tables each six foot in length sits equipped with vices, metal cuffs and cups of epoxy adhesive. Each glass stem must be permanently fixed to a metal cuff before it can be transferred to a corresponding metal receptacle on the spine above. Brian oversees this process, making decisions about which stem goes where according to pitch, texture and colour. A metal pin is then used to secure the cuff stem into place and ever so slowly the concept that has lived in Brian's mind for months starts to take physical shape. At the rate of 30 to 40 stems per hour, glass is permanently fixed to the spine and the creative current begins to flow in all its multicoloured brilliance. The time has finally come for the last piece to be inserted. This is the alpha piece fashioned by Mrs. Mary Virginia Terry. Brian's father, John Fruce, is at ground level and joined the moment with his son. Well, don't break that one, Brian. That's now I know, that's the one, the final don't piece. Don't back into it. Is that the last piece? Yeah, it is. Is that all the other ones on? Everything else is on, except for the one that I might replace. There it is. There it is. Whew. Through. How's it look from down there? Looks great. I'll tell you what, every piece is on there. Yeah. I'm removing my 
flag from the alpha piece. Did you bend that uh, last uh, cotter pin on? Yeah. You did? Okay. They are all in. Done. Now we've got a sculpture. <laughs> on Friday, October 13th, the enormous task is finally complete. Here we go. Ah. Well, what are we doing next? The final result is a stunning salute to line, colour and texture, as well as to the mystery of artistic inspiration and the creative process itself. The next step for Brian is to leverage Creative Current's grand opening to benefit students raising funds for future projects and study abroad trips. All the key influencers are present at the exhibit's opening, including Brian and the many volunteers who made the finished product possible. Brian's family and his father John Fruce, College of Fine Arts Dean Henry Rinney, Jacksonville University President Tim Cost, Mrs. Mary Virginia Terry, Chancellor Emerita, Dr. Francis Bartlett Kinney, and JU Provost, Dr. Donny Horner. What do you think of this? <laughs> Each year, Brian takes a select group of fine arts students to the annual international conference of the Glass Arts Society. This year, the conference will be held in Murano, Italy, where students hope to discover the future of glass by learning about its past. At Jacksonville University, the future of glass is looking bright indeed. I could have said no and not done something awesome this summer, you know, but here we are. <laughs>